in my continuing trend of referencing like 20 year old things in these intros you remember that episode of rugrats where Stu is up at like two in the morning making pudding for angelica and he says that he's lost control of his life yeah i kind of feel like that except it's me playing magic Hello, folks. A very Phil Gallagher, sleepy Thraben you here for another modern video. And today we have been asked to play an incredibly spicy mill decklist. So the origin of this term is with millstone, which put two cards from someone's library into their graveyard. And more generally, over time, this process became known as milling, and then eventually just kind of was taken in as an actual magic term and is now fully printed on magic cards. So our goal for today is to win not through damage, but by making it so our opponent has zero cards in library and then drawing a card which forces them to lose the game. The modern card pool has a decent number of powerful mill cards, such as Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and right when this card came out, I played a modern league with it where it looked really impressive. I'm sure that's been two or three years at this point. I don't actually want to look. I'll feel old. But our mill deck today is actually built around the card Archive Trap, which on the surface is a five mana card, but if your opponent searched their library, you get to cast it for free instead, and this mills 13. Uh, this is a very, very powerful effect for zero mana. Now, the mill decks normally run this card and some lands that force your opponent to search their library. So what are we doing today? Why is this video on the Thraben U channel? What makes it spicy? Enter Scheming Symmetry. For one black mana, you and your opponent are each going to search their library for a card, shuffle it, and put that card on top of it. So... You're going to, say, have an Archive Trap in hand. You are going to use your Vampiric Tutor to put another mill card on top of your library. You're going to put something on top of your opponent's library. You are then going to cast your Archive Trap as you have met its conditions, and you're going to mill the card your opponent tutored for while you get to keep your card. And that's a relatively powerful interaction. So... Here is the decklist for today, and our donor has given us a spicy one. So I, I have some deck building questions because like some of these things are in, incredibly strong, but you'll notice that Tasha's hideous laughter is not actually in this deck list. We have some curses in here, which is cool. I don't think I've played with Fraying Sanity before, uh, and, and this is neat. But we are really leaning into Archive Trap to the point where we're also going to be playing Trap Maker's Snare to tutor for it. And we are also going to play some other traps in the sideboard. Whiplash Trap to bounce some creatures, and Ravenous Trap to exile graveyards if that becomes relevant. We have a limited amount of interaction with our opponent. We have some ability to draw cards in the late game, and we have a couple of Shell Dock Isles to get some free spells as the game goes on. And I, I kind of have a, a, a couple of thoughts here before I play any matches. Number one, is the basic swamp worth it when I am playing blue, blue, blue cards and also want a few colorless utility lands to force searches for archive traps. The swamp is in there because the three copies of Field of Ruin can give you that search, but we'll kind of pay attention to whether Field of Ruins and swamps keep us from casting a critical card as this league goes on. Number two, and I think the most important question of the video, is this eight card package better or at least equally competitive to a mill deck that is just running eight more generically good cards uh, essentially is the juice worth the squeeze and that's that's really what i want to find today uh hopefully it's fun either way like it's my understanding that mill is a 
somewhat competitive modern deck. I hear, hear people complain about it from time to time online, so it must be doing something right. But, you know, it's, it's no Amulet Titan. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the league here. If you need some cards, please consider checking out Cool Stuff Inc. and using promo code THRABENU to save 5% off on your next order. And if you're looking for a chance to meet me and you live anywhere near Columbia, Tennessee, consider going to check out Game Night. On Friday, March 15th, I'll be doing a Legacy f &M, and then on Saturday, March 16th, I'll be there for a CEDH tournament for a Time Twister. Let's battle. Okay, so we have the colorless mana problem with this hand. I can't cast my three different copies of crabs, but the crabs wouldn't be good without extra land drops anyway. So we're going to go ahead and just ship this one. Um, this is this is going to be a keep on six cards. I get to go crab into crab. Or, sorry, I have two visions, not two crabs. Uh, I am debating whether or not like just playing this as a one mana cycle is better than drown in the lock in the short term. If I keep drown in the lock, this is locked into getting a basic swamp, which means I can't cast my triple blue, kip, blue pip card early on, which is kind of important for casting these. I think I'm going to throw back drown in the lock and people can yell at me for it and that'll be fine. We got a 0-3 blocker in play, which can be relevant if we get paired against, say, a Ragavan or something like that. Got Lightning Bolt, my crab. It has so much to live for. Ooh. Oh. Oh, okay. Um. So this is awkward. <laughs> I imagine that my opponent is existing in the dredge or dredge adjacent space. So, yeah. Okay. Well, here we go. Street rates, Vengevine. Yep, yep, yep. No, that's that's cool. That's cool. No attack with Ruin Crab right now. We're gonna have surgical extractions in the post sideboard game to help out with this sort of stuff. Creature one. My opponent will cast a second creature at some point, and then this happens. Er, cash in that creature. Hey, it's a Ragavan. All right, this Vengevine does get to return. My Surgicals are sideboard, so I don't get to uh, say anything about them here. I'll take four, going to 16. I'll crack this. We're going for a basic island. I'll mill six. That's putting my opponent to 14 cards in library. I think I need to just cash in one of these now. Um, that's a little slow here. So let's land drop, mill twice. This is exactly 20 cards in library. I'm going to go ahead and cast visions as a draw three. I've got field of ruins for trap maker snare which, assuming that I can stay alive for a little while, puts me in an okay spot. Eldritch Evolution? What does that do? You go bigger than Hollow Ones? Bloodbraid Elves? Okay. Sure. Play a fetch land. You won't. 26 cards left. That is not a fetch land, unfortunately, for people named Phil. All right, everybody's coming in. Oh wait, uh, no, not that crab. This crab is the 0-3. That one goes here. This has menace. I don't get to block that. My opponent does 5 damage to me. I am not currently dead on board for next turn. Because I need to use my mana, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I have black mana at my disposal if I draw Scheming Symmetry specifically. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab another island here. 23, down to 20. Sire of Insanity. Whoa. Got an Archive Trap. Hey, that's a Fractured Sanity. So this is 13... This is 14. 14 plus... Each of these is 3, right? 14 plus 6 is 20. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. Fetch... Oh, I guess... Or no, I used it end of turn. Never mind. 
Uh, grab the swamp. Mill, mill. Oh, I didn't count my fetch land twice. Please mill 14 cards. Opponent has zero cards left in library. We take down game one, uh, which is cool. Um, I am just going to take a good... Oh my god, Aleshnorn. This is cool. Okay, so... That's just a Miser's Eldritch Evolution? I mean, I guess there's a couple cards in hand. I assume that if you're playing things... Okay, well... The cards that are popping up are appearing on my other screen, so let's do this. I assume that if you're playing a bunch of things that look like this and the... Rickthar, that there's more copies of that, and my opponent might just have them in hand. So that's a thing. So I have, like, yah, 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 yah to be thinking about. Oh, and I didn't mention Mind Break Trap uh, in the intro, but that's another trap that I can go and look for. So how am I adapting here? The answer might just be ignore Drown in the Lock. Like, ignore this sort of interaction and focus on making it so that my opponent doesn't get a bunch of Venge Vines back. Which is probably the scariest thing that can happen to me. This buys so much time. I'm not sure what degree of these and how many of these to play. Because every time I cut a card with the word mill on it, it is harder for me to win the game. I need to do some amount of not losing the game. And I just have to decide how that happens. The Surgical's Instant Speed versus Soul Guide Lantern kind of being usable twice. I think I always want the Rav Trap. Then I don't know. I think I'm going to go with the Instant Speed of Surgical being important. And I have cast Scheming Symmetry zero times, so I don't necessarily have the ability to evaluate that card based on experience yet. And I'd like to get that experience so that I can sideboard properly in other rounds. Colorless mana problem again. Um, while also having the raw mana problem. How many lands are we on? I'm going to check that in a minute. Well, I think I keep the high upside of this hand. I don't think I lean further into Archive Trap. I think I get rid of this and this. And keep one strong mill card in the form of Fractured Sanity and then two traps. Love to draw uh, like a three toughness crab. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is what my deck does. Do I mill my opponent for 26 immediately? Got rid of the Ravenous Trap because I didn't have something to set up the Archive Traps. I can probably just do this next turn without really missing a beat. I think I'm just going to go tapped watery grave, pass, and not fill my opponent's graveyard with Venge Vines immediately. I'm going to take one more draw step, and then I'll use that to help inform what I tutor for with Scheming Symmetry. Like, if I draw a land, I don't need to go and fetch a land, for example. Maybe I'm supposed to do it immediately to get the 0-3 crab. But, I don't know. It feels a little weird. Fueling my opponent's graveyard-themed deck immediately. Uh, yeah, there's a Venge Vine. Yeah, maybe my opponent had, like, three copies of Eldritch Evolution in their hand at the end of last game. Braying Sanity. Well, uh... Assuming I don't die... We've got some powerful stuff coming. However, um, there's going to be some risks, I think is the, the kind way to put it. Target you, target me. Hey, Black, I am just going to put a land on top of my deck. If I had one more land, like we could put Ensnaring Bridge up there and be a happy camper. Let's mill my opponent. Let's... Mill my opponent. They have 24 cards remaining. Venge Vine, Venge Vine, Venge Vine. One, two, three Venge Vines in there. Okay, cool. Uh, it looks like I am just getting hit for six. That's fine. 
Uh, it's if these Venge Vines come back that I am just fully dead. I have my opponent on a deterministic two-turn clock. So they need to put lethal on board this turn or bring back a bunch of Venge Vines next turn. I'm about to get Rurik Thard. That's not great. How much is this? Six damage when I cast a non-creature spell. What happened to my land? Is the card that I built my league around bugged? I will go back and check my video footage to make sure that I actually clicked the card Island. I, I don't think I'm beating the Rurikthar regardless because I cast one spell and then Rurikthar hits me and kills me. Uh, but I am dead. Or at least effectively dead. I am going to concede. I'm going to take a minute to check this video footage. Bill from the future here. I miss that Ragavan exiled the top card in my library. Scheming Symmetry is not bugged. We're good. Scheming Symmetry is indeed bugged. I just looked at the footage and I did indeed click on the island and then I did not draw the island. So each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles and puts that card on top. Uh, this card does not work. So, uh, well, that sucks. I'm going to play out the rest of this round and then I'll figure out what I'm doing here. Um, I've got a crab to start with. This is perfectly fine. The Ensnaring Bridge is really good in this matchup. Although not just a game over if Rurikthar is a thing. All right. Um, I found a bug report for Scheming Symmetry. Uh, it's real old. I'll just put an Archive Trap under Sheldock Isle. Next turn I'll play Ruin Crab. And then I can fetch to start milling my opponent. We'll just kind of see how strong of a start they have. I have the 0-3 crab for if they drop a Ragavan. Hey, it's a Ragavan. So, play crab. Play fetch land. I need to mill my opponent for the first three immediately. I don't have to crack my fetch land for the next three cards yet. I can wait on that for a little while. All right, there is a Cathartic Reunion. A Vengevine is in Graveyard. Opponent decides not to attack. Um, I don't have anything to do with this mana, so I will just wait in case I draw another Crab, which I do not. I'll play my Fetch Land. I'll mill my opponent for a little bit. I hit another Vengevine for them. I'm so kind like that. I am not great at taking cards out of my hand. These trap makers' snares get stuck unless I choose to intentionally fail my search. Playing a snaring bridge puts me to four, which is not a magical number here. Playing Fractured Sanity takes a card out of my hand. I think I am going to put the bridge into play and start working towards this archive trap and give my opponent a problem that they are going to have to solve. I don't love telegraphing the problem, and there is now a third Vengevine in the graveyard, but I don't know that just passing the turn with Trapmaker's Snare up, I, I don't know that that gets me towards Ensnaring Bridge doing what I need it to do. And is this half of Library? No, it's 20 or fewer. Okay, cool. It's been a while. Utopia Sprawl is fine. There's only one ensnaring bridge in the deck, if memory serves. Ooh, nice. Not having these hit play this turn is kind of a big deal. Hello, Trapmaker Snare. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Three cards. 33. I think I have to just cast this to take it out of my hand, more so than anything else. Because I am just still going to have these stuck in my hand like i can double i can fetch and then double trap maker snare but if i don't have a search thing all right elf happens cascading into a utopia sprawl that's fine this arbor elf is gonna do some heavy lifting if my opponent has accidentally drawn a rorik thar or whatever yeah and this gets to legally attack here or, well, not legally, but like safely attack here more accurately. I'll take the three. 
I am not going to fetch immediately in case I draw another crab. Uh, Visions of Beyond is a draw three. I am happy with that. There is a scheming symmetry. So let's fetch a black. There's a mill three. Let's cast a trap maker's snare. Get an archive trap. Cast both players. Cast seeming sim scheming symmetry. Put some card on top of my deck. It doesn't matter because that actually doesn't go there. I'll archive trap my opponent. And archive trap my opponent. And that gets us there. Uh, we take down round one. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Uh, so a quick note here, uh, went and verified the bug uh, and then rewatched the video again after realizing it wasn't a bug. The Ragavan triggered and grabbed my land, but since it was a land, uh, I don't think it popped out on screen, so I missed the visual prompt. Uh, my opening hand gives me a mill 13 on turn one. I tutor for a land for Ruin Crab, and then I think I'm playing Magic. I think I'm going to keep this one, despite a little bit of the awkwardness here with this. My opponent is on five cards here and is playing Tron. Hey, opponent, how would you like to search your library for a Tron piece? I'll let you do it. I will. I am a gentleman like that. Get an island. I guess it's better to get like Obero, isn't it? If I just want Island. Then we'll mill 13 here. I hope this Tron deck isn't uh, playing any Eldrazi. That would, uh, that would be awkward for me to find out about halfway through this game. I don't know that I beat that in game one. So there's Power and Power Plant. I do this. So do I just hold up Drown in the lock? Probably. It's a really good counterspell right now. And I don't necessarily get value out of Ruin Crab immediately. All right, there's the Natural Tron. Some green mana. Your stars are fine. Immediate filtering into green, green. Uh, your Ancient Stirrings is fine. I, I get one counterspell this game in all likelihood. I need to make sure it is on a card that counts. That's a card that counts. Let's counter that. Um, note that Fractured Sanity is currently very hard to cast. I, I don't really get to optimize Ruin Crab stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and just blow up a land, attempt to take my opponent off of Tron. Yaw, and then I will play my Crab. Notably, everyone always tells me to attack the two mana lands instead of the three mana land. I kind of disagree with that, and hence I didn't do it. That is a Karn, the Great Creator. Elixir of Immortality? <sighs> All right. God damn it. Am I risking Tron? I don't think I'm risking Tron. So, Tower, Mine tower still a bunch of power plants in the deck it doesn't make sense to attack mine though uh, let's go ahead and take this out grab an island i can cycle a fractured sanity if i want not like the most excited about that because my goal is to turn this into a mill 28 or so with fraying sanity all right, there is a stone brain there. My opponent doesn't even need to crack this immediately. Yep, yep, yep. So the big worry for me is if my opponent like uses Karn to get something that highly warps the game. Uh, not that this hasn't or anything. 
I have anything that helps with this in the sideboard? I guess I can like Soul Guide Lantern to nuke the graveyard. All right. Asha's Hideous Laughter is not in my deck. So my opponent whiffs. So like, if my opponent had named Fractured Sanity here, that would have been quite bad for me. So we lucked out a little bit. Note that if I mill my opponent out, they're not dead until they draw a card, so they can just activate an Elixir of Immortality in their upkeep. Um, I think I saved this. Archive Trap, got it. So I'll play this. Play my land. When I have 24 cards in library, I've put a Cityscape Leveler in there. Maybe I'm just kind of powering through here. i take the extra fetch immediately. I could just cycle this now and just try to force the Elixir of Immortality crack. I think casting this next turn is better at doing that. So, three, six, another 10 cards. I guess doing this does kind of force the crack. Crap Maker's Snare. Okay. The Fractured Sanity happens. And my opponent goes down to seven cards. Six after a draw step. Um, that's currently okay. Yep, yep, yep. Note that Fractured Sanity does trigger each turn. So let's cast this. I'll get an Archive Trap. I guess I don't have to tap like that. I guess I can go one, return Obero, play Obero. There's a mill three which is really a mill six because of Fractured Sanity. And then next turn, I will just Archive Trap, Archive Trap after Scheming Symmetry and mill my opponent's entire deck. That sounds pretty sexy, if I do say so myself. So the way this doesn't work is if my opponent draws exactly Ix Elixir of Immortality as their draw for turn, then... I'm a sad panda. Otherwise, I'm good. Uh, okay, I guess they can cantrip for it. Um, expedition map is fine. Sure. A wire might on my fractured sanity is annoying. Uh, that's happening. My opponent has not searched, right? Because they just looked at the top five. Okay. Got it. Uh, map is fine. I've got double archive trap here. All right. I'll take six. Go to end of turn. I'm thinking about whether or not I bounce Obero. I think I do. Oh. Play land. You mill some. Trap maker snare. Get archive trap. Scheming symmetry. That targets both of us. I just need a big mill card to end things, which is probably Fractured Sanity. Cast for free. Cast for free. We've milled the Elixir of Immortality. So the hardest battle is now over. All right, my opponent searches with their map. There is a tower. Let's see what happens. It is a Cityscape Leveler. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it does mean that I just, or no, I still have lethal. I have a lethal card on top of my deck. Um, that's fine. So now Elixir of Immortality is back in exile for the purposes of uh, bup, 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 bup. Karn the Great Creator finding it again. So that's a thing. One, two, three mana. There's the 14 cards to close out the game. And we take it down. Very happy with that. So here's this awkward thing, right? If I bring in Soul Guide Lantern to help fight... Uh, sorry, just totally... Uh, Elixir of Immortality, this actually gets shut off by Karn. And Surgical Extraction doesn't do great versus that sort of stuff. Like, shuffling in the entire graveyard is what matters, not removing the elixir. 
And even if I do exile my opponent's graveyard, that just puts the elixir back in exile to be gotten with Karn again. So that's a little annoying. Karn being able to just like find an answer to fraying sanity doesn't help. I maybe need some number of spell pierces to help get me out of the early game and counter Karn and the One Ring coming down. Oh man, there's Fraying Sanity and Fractured Sanity in this deck list. What do I cut? Maybe I cut Fraying Sanity since my opponent has a tutorable answer to it and it doesn't technically mill cards on its own. Uh, this hand mills zero cards. So let's say no. This hand requires my opponent to search. If they search, I mill a gajillion D. So I think I keep it. I think I'm going to get rid of Maddening Cacophony right now. Okay. That's a search effect for these archive traps. That is... <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's especially cool if my opponent does not crack the map on their turn and I get to make my next land drop so that I get to trap maker sense and mill 13 times 4 cards ah oh, this is bullshit I only get to mill 14 or 13 times 3 cards oh fuck I oh my god I just misclicked in a devastating way missed milling 39 cards cool 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 uh, well hopefully I recover from that see how bad this is if it if it's karn it doesn't matter right because that represents the elixir of immortality which is just a pain i'm going to go ahead and try to redraw for a spell pierce specifically here i am an unparalleled genius a fucking urza's tower i'm upset all right well hopefully my opponent just plays it immediately I kind of tipped my hand that that's happening. I should not have fetched yet. I, I, uh, and this, like, specifically happens to play around the spell pierce exactly. Um, am I just taking a card with this and denying one redraw? Seems fine. Not excited about it. Yeah, the, the natural Tron into Karn Elixir is brutal. So... I don't expect to win this game at this stage. I could be wrong. I won through this last time. I think it's very tough. It honestly might have been a boon now that I misclicked through uh, casting these archive traps. Cityscape leveler is 8 power and it blows up Ruin Crab. So this can't be used to cast a non-artifact spell. Um, but I guess I could use it to cycle still. I think my opponent just got under me this time. I don't think I outclock that while also answering Elixir. I'm going to go ahead and concede. I still think I am keeping these spell pierces. My opponent's, my opponent's draw happened to play around that spell pierce. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. Uh, this is fine. I don't have a trap yet to kind of set up my best lines with this. But like the Hedron Crab itself is milling for 9 right now. The Fractured Sanity is either 4 or 14 cards. And we get to Visions of Beyond relatively quickly. See what my opponent's got. It is an Expedition map. Uh, Drown in the Lock is cool. I will just be holding that up in this turn cycle. Target you... And then I'm going to pass turn with Drown in the Lock available. I don't think I'm casting it. Oh my god, my opponent kept a one lander. Did they mulligan? Oh, um, yeah, I just totally missed them mulliganing while I was talking. Yeah, they mulliganed to three and then missed their land drop and conceded. Uh, GG's. And that is a little awkward, this hand. I think I'm going to keep this. Like, we have Crab into Land Drop into Fraying Sanity one turn after that with one easy redraw. 
my opponent will probably be kind and help me out with putting cards into their graveyard or drawing a bunch of cards, making it so that I don't actually have to mill that many cards. Fractured Sanity is the mill 14. I'll take that one. Um, it does suck that I can't play turn one Ruin Crab to block the Ragavan. Like, that's Big Booty Crab's drop job. It's on its resume. Blocks Ragavan. Mill's good. I only have one Ensnaring Bridge, right? God, I'm going to have like some things to think, think about for the post-sideboard game here. Um, I am assuming that we are playing against like Marktide Regent dot deck. Crown in the lock. That's fine. I actually don't want to draw that right now with how my mana looks. All right. So, Attempt Crab. I imagine that I am going to get counterspelled here. It's possible like my opponent just ends up lightning bolting this. And I just get three cards worth of value out of Ruin Crab, which might actually blow up in my face. 17. All right, it is the counter spell. I'll make my land drop and pass. I'm not in great shape here. Like, this Ragavan gets to hit me for free. Merktide Regent and friends can start coming down immediately. Um, and I'm not doing great in terms of clocking my opponent. Uh, especially since, like, this is blue, blue, blue pips that aren't going to be super castable. That is expressive iteration. All right, they hit a land with it. And that is three power. So I've got five active in power play. I have two removal spells that I can't cast. Scheming Symmetry is not castable. Which of these am I cycling? I think I am cycling the two mana card. This does work towards some more cards in Graveyard for the purposes of the Sheldock Isle later. I miss on lands. I think I'm dead. I think outside of a just crazy fraying sanity turn, I don't think I come back. Yeah, you can seek the beast. Like, if I draw a land, play fraying sanity, and then draw another land, I think I'm live for... Some archive trap nonsense. Otherwise, I'm probably in trouble. Another EI. Bolt goes to yard. They're just going to get a bobble off it. I do also have to keep in mind that, like, my opponent can just, like, have counter spells and stuff that stop what I'm doing. Like, I know they are just playing out a lot of things at sorcery speed right now but like they can just untap with a counter spell or two up and i don't think i can ever win all right the basic swamp is gone and marktide regent is happening this is eight nine ten this is eleven on board damage i think i am not live for anything anymore one two three four five six seven eight actually my basic swamp is gone so this is unfortunately a shock. Let's drown that Marktide region. I take three, go to five. I'm not quite in bolt and I'm dead range, but life's horrible. All right, my opponent's just going to uh, continue to seek the beast. Do they have green mana? Like, surely they must, right? Oh, okay, I'm going to take five. Or sorry, I'm going to take three. It's small again. You, you, would you like to search your library for a trap at the low, low cost of two mana? Murky again. Murktide Regent again. I'm just like immediately under the gun. I can answer a creature here. Can I mill 30 cards in any capacity? Can't kick Cacophony. I have four total mana. I can use two to trap. Get an archive trap. Have symmetry to force a search. One mana available. I archive trap for 13 cards. That's 18 cards in graveyard, meaning visions of beyond isn't on. 27 cards in library, so one archive trap is not a hit. I don't have an out. GG.
So I think this game becomes how, how controlling do I become? Like, how hard do I want to try to exile the graveyard? I think I want, like, push and bridge at the very least. And then I'm thinking about these cards as well. I don't really keep up with my opponent on card advantage. Like, I have Visions of Beyond as Ancestral in the late game. That becomes worse if I want to start exiling my opponent's graveyard, though. So, like, that's awkward. This is a time where I'm not really sure what to do without reps in the format. Like, I could see getting rid of Visions and respecting my opponent's graveyard while also bringing some things that keep me from dying and getting rid of a couple of snares. And scheming symmetry becomes a little less powerful. But I think I just kind of accept that. Yeah, I, I will keep a crab hand with this many fetch lands. I'm perfectly happy to do so. I think I take two damage to play, or rather to get the maximum number of milled cards with these creatures. I think that's the plan. I am going to play a Hedron Crab first. It's my worst crab, and if one of my crabs gets bolted, I want it to be this one, because this one at least blocks Ragavan. He's just a little guy. He's just a little guy. You can't hurt him. It's illegal. Ha-ha! Hell yeah. So, I will play a Ruin Crab, fetch a basic Swamp, uh, and we are going to be making cards like Merktide Regent actively better here. Uh, we milled two of them, so that's good news. Yaw, yeah. yaw. Yeah. Uh, let's pop this out here, cast that. Target Ragavan. Two murky boys down. Now these crabs represent a lot of cards, right? Like, each one of these fetch lands is a mill 12 that's uncounterable. That is a strong. We'll see if my opponent slams a Murktide. We'll see if they double remove crabs. Like, there's, there's things that can happen that can spin this game very, very, very quickly. Oh, it uh, seems like they just have counter spells. Like, if they just have counter spells, I will, I will bury them with crabs. Ooh. Yaw. Mill six. Yaw. Yaw. Stern scolding. Uh, sure. Uh, let's attempt to play this. If my opponent bites on a counter spell. Uh, they don't. I don't know that it matters too much what I exile. Um, artifact is maybe the hardest card type. I think I just pass and go to my opponent's upkeep and then fetch in their upkeep and then nuke their graveyard. That way if they do want to interact with something like a lightning bolt, I make them use mana on their own turn. Yeah. 27 cards left. So I need to click the tap sack one, not the draw card one. Just exile all that stuff. So we dodged that Merktide Regent window, which is nice. Let's see what my opponent's got. Uh, Ledger Shredder is fine. Note that this is not an optional trigger, right? So like this always happens. Uh, we can sometimes use that to force my opponent to draw a card when they have zero cards in the library and kill them uh, a little earlier than expected, uh, which is honestly kind of neat. Whatever card I draw, my opponent knows that I have. That is a Drown in the Lock. Am I interested in killing this? Kind of seems like no. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just hold this up. I don't think I'm super worried about Ledger Shredder in the short term. It's possible I am supposed to fetch immediately. At this point, um... Okay. I think I'm going to stop that one. It's hard for me to counter a Merktide Regent right now with the number of cards in my opponent's graveyard because, like, they will just remove some. A Spell Pierce. Um, I maybe should have fetched in response so that if my opponent draws Bolt off the Connive trigger specifically, nothing bad happens to me. 
Yeah. There's six more cards. Bringing my opponent to 10. I'll pay for the spell pierce. Oh uh, yeah, fluster is totally fine. Like I'm so happy with that fluster targeting this rather than something like a Look, I'm not going to claim I remember which one is Fractured Sanity and which one is Fraying Sanity, but something that mills my opponent for, like, 13. Uh, we're good with that. And Archive Traps are hard castable right now. Hey, it's Fractured Sanity. That's the one that I was thinking of. Oh, my opponent's... Oh, sorry, my opponent is at 4. Uh, that means that I should just cycle this rather than cast it then, like, I don't walk into something random like a Force of Negation. All right, cool. Is there green mana in this deck? Or is this straight up just red? Yeah, they're just playing it as a red draw to. People who play Modern regularly, is that normal? Like, is that a thing that people just do in this format? Or is this weird? When you write a comment... Remind me what I am asking about. Don't just say, it's weird. Just remind me like, hey, that card is completely normal, played in this way. Because it'll be like a week and a half until this video comes out. Um, this is a slow hand that's pretty good against the early Ragavan and friends. It can be slightly awkward in terms of sequencing if like I fetch a basic swamp with this and then I draw Hedron Crab... And, like, I don't get maximum Hedron Crab value or anything. Uh, but hopefully that's fine. I'm not using their mana in their first turn cycle. Uh, yeah, you got it. Bottom, bottom. All right. I think this is a, like, holy removal spell Batman moment. And, like, we, we know what we're doing. We're playing this control role. And we will slap down these, which can really do some work in terms of amplifying a limited number of mill spells. I mean, I am, I am fine with playing it. Um, sometimes this just gets countered by the Stern Scolding, uh, but I, I think that's fine. It means I don't have Drown in the lock up immediately, but I am not really in the position to counter a Murktide region if it happens, whereas I am in the position to kill some of this stuff. Uh, so that can resolve. We'll go for the mana-efficient end-of-turn Fatal Push and hope that it dies. Counterspell is available. Counterspell is not happening. Well, we have a really good pair of archive traps at some point. Nice. Uh, yeah, surveil one, please. Reared and a graveyard. Archive trap you. Archive trap you. Now there's enough cards in graveyard where I can drown in the lock of Murktide Regent if one is played. Now, opponent can play Murktide Regent with Counterspell backup, but then I just, like, drown in the lock a second time on my own turn. Ona only has 19 cards remaining in library. Like, we're a, we're a good portion of the way through at this point. No. Okay, so there's an actual factual Counterspell to counter this. Murktide Regent hits play. I'll drown it in the lock. Um, one, two Murktide Regents already in Graveyard? Uh, I guess I don't let my opponent draw the card. I just kill this right now um, for Force of Negation in case that's played. I am going to play this tapped this turn. Oh, my opponent is just done with me. That's fair. I'm just winning, right? I'm winning with this deck, despite having very little idea of what I'm doing in the modern format. Okay, this is a weird one. So I can turn two, Trap Maker Snare, get an Archive Trap, turn three, play Fraying Sanity, turn four, Play Fraying Sanity. Scheming Symmetry Mill 39 for one card. Hey, I think I'm just going to keep this. It's, it's like a little weird, but if I assume that I draw either some lands or some spells, I think this is fine. All right, are we doing the same thing as last round? Or is this going to be some sort of like Bernie prowessy sort of thing? IDK. 
All right, so what is polluted delta? Polluted delta, a watery grave that I just do right now to potentially save some life and get me my black mana? I think so. I don't know what we're playing against. Okay. Literal, literal no idea what is happening here. Someone in the comments will be like, Phil, this is the second most commonly played deck in modern. I'll be like, oops. That is what it is. Let's just play this and pass. Again, I think we're on that praying sanity archive trap sort of plan. Okay. At some point, I'll mail some cards and I will get to see what my opponent is doing. And that will be like legitimately useful. My opponent's about to search with Urza's Saga. So, like, this archive trap fraying sanity thing is quite real. Crab. All right. So, yeah. Choose to enchant you. We're going to pass turn. Nothing going to graveyard this time immediately. Opponent will get some constructs. Then we'll figure out what's up. I don't want to play Archive Trap until end step, or until second main phase, rather, because of DRC. I don't want that to grow. It's also possible that I wait until my next turn. Uh, yeah, sure, you can get rid of my Field of Ruin. That's fine. It's uh, Anyway, it's also... Oh, another one. Sure. It's also possible I wait until my next turn because I can just mill more cards with Archive Trap. Uh, so let's think about this. On my turn, I play Crab, I blue to Delta, and Fetch. Go to 13, mill 6 cards, play Fraying Sanity, but then I don't Archive Trap in that turn cycle. Alternatively, I Fraying Sanity, Fetch, Scheming Symmetry, we both search, I mill 39 off Archive Trap, 4, 8, I, I always get two turns, okay, I, I think I'm just going to wait, take the one here, so, yeah, fetch, uh, maybe I don't fetch, maybe I just play Swamp, so, yeah, Bam. Cast Scheming Symmetry on both of us. So Fractured Sanity just kills my opponent next turn. I'm just going to get a basic island in case I randomly get like Blood Moon or something and lose this land. I don't know what I am playing around yet. Like Blood Moon or the Saga is not the biggest combo, but like why would you play Mono Red in Modern? And Blood Moon is the only thing that I can come up with off the top of my head. So, mill you for 13. Oh, wait, hold on. This is so much better than I thought it was, isn't it? These stack. So, my opponent mills for 13, and then mills for 26, don't they? <laughs> this is wonderful deck building. Okay, what is going on? It's like Inti? So, this is... If you have two monitors and you zoom in after popping this out, the card appears on your second monitor. So this is just a mono-red aggro deck with some food nonsense and some galvanic blasts and lightning bolts that go to the face. A miser's underworld breach. Okay. I've got the gist of what's going on. Okay. I, I like Fatal Push versus what I saw from the other side of the battlefield here. I think I like Ensnaring Bridge. Drown in the Lock is a decent removal spell. What is my worst card here? Is it Trap? Or Sorry, is it Trap Maker's Snare? Like, is it the Tutor? I haven't drawn Madden and Cacophony very much. That's a mill 8 to get Fraying Sanity started. That's a thing. I think I'm going to get rid of the Trap Maker's Snare <laughs> in respect of my one of Ensnaring Bridge, as weird as that sounds. Because some portion of the time stuff, stuff like archive traps and snares get stuck in my hand and I can't deploy them. I don't know, like, the snares are nice because my opponent is playing an Urza Saga deck, so, like, they are going to search pretty consistently. Maybe this game is fast enough that I get rid of these. 
I don't, I don't know. I, I, I need more reps to feel good about my board plans. Uh, this is mill 8 into mill 14. Probably into mill 13. This is 35 <laughs> of my opponent's 63 cards. My opponent's hands are likely to be pretty bad if they do this. My crabs are significantly better as a recursive source. I don't know that I just mill a hand that has a good mix of lands and spells when my opponent's hands are pretty likely to be clunky. I think I'm just going to be good with this. We will start by playing the non-fetch lands in respect of crabs. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Alpine Moon. That is a modern legal Magic the Gathering card that you are legally allowed to play. This, this is the cost of boarding in cards that are like clearly not good for the matchup. Fatal push. Yeah, don't, don't mind if I do. Are, are, is one of these Prismatic Vistas dead? I don't remember how many islands I have exactly, but these are all three basic land fetches, and I've drawn two basic lands already. Um, it's... Yeah, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Like, my, my opponent has boarded in a bunch of cards and is now missing land drops because their land ratios are wrong. He's going to search, is going to turn on my archive trap. Uh, this doesn't feel great. Um, I'm not going to get to six mana before this game ends, I don't think. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Take the eight cards. And I'm going to do something that looks a little weird. I am going to just fetch immediately here and grab an island. If my opponent plays Pithing Needle, I do not want Prismatic Vista to be Pithing Needled since I have two more in my hand. All right, they're going to discard a card to make a food to token, and this whole oval, oval chase daredevil thing is going to happen. That is okay with me. You may lightning bolt my face. I accept. So they float a mana. I think they had a mox of some kind that they could get. It is a haywire mite. It is another haywire mite. You do have two power in play now. I am on a clock. Sure. Yeah, you can you can make your food. You can always always yield to that fellow. The points of life are not relevant here. I'll just archive trap you now. Take your card. I'll start doing fraying sanity things. I think I'm just going to do this off a basic and take one rather than taking two for watery grave. All right. Prismatic Vista is still live. So here's 13, or sorry, 14 cards. I have 14 more coming. And I presumably have many turns to draw the last couple, even with things like Galvanic Blast being taken into account. Pick your poison. That card's sweet. Uh, Dash Ragavan is good. If that cuts multiple turns off the clock here. I'm at six, so I am on a three turn clock. Oh man, that Fatal Push would have been a reasonable draw. Although I might just be trying to draw a mill card and kill my opponent more so than anything else here. And Ragavan bounces back. Scheming Symmetry. So I can't play that unless I also mill my opponent. My opponent currently can't draw a card, right? Food, 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 treasure. So I can cast this, put a mill card on top of my deck. Oh, the dash Ragavan gets in the way of that, doesn't it? It does. So I could use this to guarantee that my opponent takes a bad card out of my deck. But then if they don't dash the Ragavan, uh, it becomes awkward. So I think I am just not casting this. So let's Fractured Sanity my opponent for 14. Play a tapped Watery Grave. And I win as long as I draw any mill card. It can't be one of the enchantments because I don't naturally mill my opponent. All right, here's the Dash Ragavan. So I need a mill card, and I need my opponent to not have another burn spell. Okay, cool. Happy to not draw that. 
All right, cool. Not dead to burn. Crab. Land drop. Three cards. And then I fetch for the other ones. I'm playing for a trophy despite my limited modern knowledge. Uh, this deck is actually, like, surprisingly good. All right. Um, I'm keeping a hand with a crab and two fetch lands. I have double trap makers snare um, for archive traps and scheming symmetry to use them. Is this going to be some sort of stone blade type deal? I think that's my working theory. And I'll pass the turn. Ah, that makes more sense. What's the blue for? What does the blue accomplish in hammer time? I don't know. I do know <laughs> that the hammer is coming. I don't know whether or not this represents counter spells. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking about what fetch land I'm playing and whether or not I'm playing Trapmaker's Snare at sorcery speed. I think I play this land. I think I'm going to fetch now while I guarantee get my three cards from Crab. And I think I'll pass turn holding up the mana. Saga ticks up. Uh, that's scary. Unblockable. Okay. No, that's so good here. Got it. Oh, man, and you can equip it. Oh, this is cute. This is cute. Oh, wait, but the, the equip doesn't actually do anything, right? Because, like, you equip it, and then this trigger resolves, and you do the, the cloaky thing. So I'm going to snare and pick up an archive trap. It would be cool if I mill all of my opponent's hammers. Wouldn't that be neat? And then I will go ahead and fetch. Get three more cards. Play snare. Get a new trap. Cast scheming symmetry. Target both of us. This forces the search. So I will just take a large mill spell as my next draw, assuming that I get there. And we are trying to mill all the hammers so that I don't die to an Ink Moth Nexus. Um, there's not a great way to look at this. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Three hammers? I think I only got three of the hammers. So I think I'm dead. I think my opponent animates Ink Moth. Oh no, I guess if they give it protection from colorless, the equipment falls off, right? So they can't like put it on here and then give pro blue to get through. I think I'm alive. Um, unless they give protection from colorless and then this allows an attach. Oh no, sorry, why, why am I thinking about protection from colorless? This is blue. Blup. So I can't block either of these things, and I go down. Yeah, ignore everything that I was uh, saying about Giver Runes there. I just kind of got lost in the sauce. Uh, yeah, we needed to hit one more hammer. I maybe win if it gets to my turn. What would I draw? I can't tell anymore. Thank you, Magic Online. So am I, am I racing, or am I trying to interact? I have to decide. My opponent's deck has a bunch of stuff like give, Giver of Runes and Ward cards to ignore interaction. And Ensnaring Bridge isn't necessarily going to stop me from dying, because my opponent can sometimes flash in the hammers. I can become interactive if I want. I'm just not sure how good that is. I think I need to be interactive on the draw. I can try to Surgical Hammers... But if I do so, I still just risk dying to Urza Saga tokens. I think for the game that I am on the play, I am going to just resubmit the game one deck and try to mill my opponent out. This is mid. I'm going to try to believe in the crab. As long as my opponent does some searching, and this is a live card for Archive Trap, I, I think everything's fine. All right, my opponent's on six. I think to maximize milling, I am going to take the two and go for Ruin Crab. Ruin Crab is on track to mill or 
12, 15 with current resources. And we'll just see how good that is. Yep. Raying sanity. That's pretty sweet. Let's... I think I'm always casting Trapmaker's Snare with my mana in this turn cycle, so I'm just going to go ahead and fetch now. What is this? Reprieve? My opponent is playing those. I'm just going to cast my Snare now and put Archive Trap into my hand. Uh, it's free, so like if Reprieve happens, I just cast it again. Sure. Well, that's a search, which is good, but I think Both Nexus is terrifying here. So I'll Archive Trap you. I think I'm in trouble, though. So, Scheming Symmetry into Visions of Beyond lets me draw the cards immediately. We don't have a removal spell here. I think I am fraying sanity. I think I'm fraying sanity, and if my opponent doesn't have the next land drop to attempt to kill me, I think I kill them on the next turn. So we mill for three more, down to 25. I fraying sanity and pass. Get a couple more mills at end step from fraying sanity. Uh, so we're afraid of activate ink, moth nexus, attack, no blocks because it flies, uh, plus land drop, cast Sigarda's aid, I die from infect. And I think we've got it if that doesn't happen. It does not happen. I will happily take one point of damage here, I think. Uh, well, it's not one, right? It's a billion. Do I need Hedron Ruin Crab to kill next turn? Ruin Crab is a guaranteed 3, which is really a guaranteed 6. I cast Scheming Symmetry and then Visions of Beyond. I can draw and play a 2-mana card. On 2-mana, I can mill 8. No, on 2-mana, I can mill 13, because my opponent will have searched. So if I can mill 13, I can mill 26, which means I do block. Figured it out. I don't need to die to double hammer here. Sure. So it gets equipped. Goodbye, crab. Another fraying sanity. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Scheming symmetry. Black. Get an archive trap. Play ancestral. Archive trap. Target you for 13, which becomes 26. Ooh, March of Otherworldly Light. That's going to exile my Fraying Sanity. My opponent will go down to five cards in Library. And I didn't have enough mana to play this one. Got it. So I am dead in two turns from this. I'm dead immediately if my opponent has another hammer. Nope, I'm down to five. I need to just top deck a mill card. I did not. Ah, oh, that's so unfortunate. We put up a 4-1 finish in this league, uh, which I'm very happy with given my proficiency in modern. All right, so how do we feel about this one? Um, Leo, your deck is good. Like, you, you put together something really good here. Like, I, look at the, I looked at this, I thought spicy, I thought maybe a little bit janky, but honestly, it was pretty smooth. Like, yeah, occasionally we ran into some little mana hiccups, or we ran into not quite having the setup for scheming symmetry. But using this as like your top of library tutor and being able to make it non-symmetrical with things like Hedron Crab while also using it to empower Archive Trap and leaning into Archive Trap with the snare actually was really good. I don't know that I have any strong suggestions for how to change the deck list. Without more reps on this and without more modern format knowledge, I don't fully know how to approach matchups. I, I do know that what we're doing here is appropriate for the, the format's power level, and I, I give this one my, my seal of approval.
And not only do I give it my seal of approval, like this was actually like very fun to play. And there were some neat situations to puzzle through. And like I learned some things throughout the league. Like it was not intuitive to me when I was recording the deck tech that stacking multiple copies of Fraying Sanity was just going to be like batshit insane. And so like maybe I missed some lines with that in the early rounds. Maddening Cacophony was maybe the main deck underperformer here. I don't know that you cut this card. I'm sure you've thought about like Tasha's Hideous Laughter, like that's a well-known card. It is slower, and like sometimes you just need to play some two-mana things. I don't know that the kicker is ever going to realistically come up playing this deck. Like, I think there were relatively few games where I had six mana before the game actually ended in some capacity, um, literally or effectively. Uh, but yeah, if you end up wanting to try out this deck in paper, consider checking out Cool Stuff Inc. and using promo code THRAVENU to save a little bit on your order. And folks, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!